Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. This week we're going to be using the Vallejo Game Ink Range in combination with some transparent resin prints to see what kind of effects we can come up with. I'm going to start with this miniature from the Puzzles and Props Kickstarter. It's a little crystal cat and it's a great handout to have at my table to add something a little bit extra for my players. Essentially, we're just going to cover this entire thing with a layer of the Azul Blue. And for my first test, this thing came out awesome. It looks super crystalline and my players are going to struggle to believe that this handout came out of my garage. I've also printed out a few little gems so we can do a comparison to some of the Citadel options, including the Technical Soulstone Blue and their Blue Shade. Once these were printed out, they got a quick clean in isopropyl alcohol, had the supports removed and got a cure in the UV station. Using inks and or a glaze on these 3D prints is a good idea. The tiny little layer lines might be too small for us to generally see, but they will refract light and cause these otherwise transparent models to look a little bit cloudy. So by doing a layer of glaze or an ink, these tend to sit in those tiny little unseen layer lines and smooth them out. So the light just comes through nice and crystal. Now we have a base with the gloss varnish. We're going to have to do another base with the Azul Blue from the Game Ink range. Then moving on to the Night Shade by Citadel. At first, this really gave me high hopes when it was wet, but unfortunately it dries a lot more matte. Then we moved on to the Soulstone Blue, again by Citadel, but this is a technical paint. I found that this was a bit too gluggy, so I cheated and added a drop of the game ink to help water everything down. Ultimately, I think that this combination actually made for the best effect. And now that they're all done, we'll set them aside to dry and have a bit of fun playing with colours. We're going to move on to the articulated dragon print. Here's a bigger example of what the print can look like. This was really popular around Christmas. This model is going to be great because each of the body parts can be painted with a different ink to show me what their different colours look like on these tiny little details. I'll be scaling this down to 35% and printing it off on my resin printer. I use any cubic clear resin in a Mars 2 printer. And in this case, I'm going to have the settings quite low to try and keep any articulation in the dragon. And now we're pretty happy with that print. So it's time to start adding some inks. Running through the entire collection, I was adding the inks to one of the body sections at a time. Fairly quickly, I realized that this was blending together and kind of muddying the effect. So once I'd done a full round, I decided to start adding the colors in three sections at a time. This way I could see them at their strongest in the middle and where they blend with the surrounding colors on the outer elements. This dragon will serve as a reference on my painting table to show me what all these different inks look like in use. As I reached the end and had gone through the full set, I played around with blending a few of the different colors. This little guy turned out pretty cool with a nice little range of colors and a good showing of some of the blending in the head. It gives a real good idea of how these different kinds of inks can react on this kind of clear resin. And now let's go back to those crystals and see how they've dried. They're looking pretty good. As I mentioned earlier, the nightshade from Citadel did go a bit matte, but I might try adding a gloss varnish to the top of this and see if it can fix the problem. And finally, comparing the two blues, the pure game ink blue and the Stolstone blue with a drop of the game ink, I think the Soulstone and Game Ink combo is the best, but considering half this color could have just come from the Game Ink pigment, I think I have to give it to the Game Inks. I'm really happy with how these have turned out. A really easy and basic effect to get a nice crystalline look. They were a perfect base for the frosty ice look I released in my video last week for my ice elemental painting tutorial. 
and I'm really keen to see what other effects that I can come up with. If you guys have any ideas in ways I could use them, let me know in the comments below. And until then, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and remember, never stop making stuff.